Grant and Brad's Ghastly Gab. This was my first Christmas in Ohio, back coming, having just moved back from California. Um, it was a cold night. Yeah, there was snow in the forecra- forecast. Uh, my parents, I had moved in and lived with, back, moved home and lived with my parents and their dog, uh, Spencer, uh, a mix between a beagle and a basset hound. In either case, um, I was feeling very, I uh, started feeling a little blue and depressed. Um, on this cold night, missing the moon and the ocean uh, and the sunshine and the warm weather in California, I decided just to hibernate uh, this night and watch some TV, read a book, just do anything to keep my mind off of California. So anyway, um, my mom had asked me if I wanted to come out and um, have some dinner uh, with them and at a nice restaurant nearby in a bar and um, and uh, do a little bit of Christmas shopping and kind of walk around the mall and look at lights. Well, I uh, politely declined and uh, decided to, you know, go on dating websites and just, you know, try to get, get reacquainted back in Ohio. So having moved back, uh, my parents... Um, at that time, we're renting an old farmhouse, and it was out in the country. And so there were coyotes at night, bullfrogs in the summer. Well, this winter night, you know, it was dead silent. Uh, living out in the country, there aren't a lot of city lights around. So when you look outside your window, it's just black, blackness. And so I'm all by myself in this old farmhouse. I hear the car pull out of the driveway. I decide to turn on a a movie in the background and get on my laptop and uh, start getting on these social dating sites just to talk to people and kind of uh, get, uh, you know, heal from a bad relationship that I'd got out of. In either case, uh, about an hour or two into it, I hear a door open and close. I hear walking and I hear a dog's collar, and so um, I say to them, you know, uh, hi guys, uh, how was the trip? I yell through the vents from above. I'm on the second floor of this farmhouse. Um, I hear some murmuring, but I dismiss it because, um, because you know, I knew that they were going to be coming upstairs at some point, and I would talk to them about, you know, their escapade. Um, when they got upstairs. So, in either case, uh, you know, hour goes by, two hours goes by, I hear a TV going downstairs, I hear a sink running, and anyway, uh, I'm wondering why they're not coming upstairs to say hello, which they always did in the past, just to check on me. You, know, you gotta love mothers. Mothers, uh, they uh, always, they never stop being mothers, even when you're an adult. So, in either case, I start to think it's really weird that, you know, they're not coming up and saying hello, especially after I acknowledge their presence yelling through the vents, you know, asking how the, the, the trip was, how the dinner was. So I, uh, get a phone call from a friend, uh, to go and watch a football game. Uh, and this is about two hours into the night. I go downstairs and there's no one there. There's no sink running. There's no TV on. Nothing. No movement. Nothing. And I look outside in the driveway and um, there's only one set of tire tracks leaving. I look in the garage. There's no cars. Nothing. Just black stillness because I've turned off the computer and TV now. I'm about to leave. Um, in either case, um, I... Uh, call my mom at that point, you know, I ask her, hey, you know, uh, where'd you guys go? And they're like, we're still out. We haven't gotten home yet. And uh, I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. And so anyway, uh, I leave and I come back. uh, And uh, the next morning, 
I go down to my mom and I say, hey, you know, uh, this is crazy. You know, I had, uh, I swore that you guys got home an hour ago or whatever. I said, you know, I must have been like dreaming. And she's like, that's weird because your sister said that she had a dream that, you know, um, she was alone in a house and that, you know, her husband and daughters uh, were home and, uh, you know, that she, that she, you know, she had the same experience. So in either case, after that, every time I would, uh, every time I was alone in that house, I would always um, listen just for noises, just to see if I was like going crazy or anything. And it just so happened that that house, after that point, every time I would be upstairs alone, I would swear that there were people downstairs and vice versa, downstairs, upstairs. So um, anyway, anyway, uh, um, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not afraid of ghosts or anything like that, but um, there's definitely something to be said about old houses. Um, Wait a minute, is this fiction or not fiction? Fiction. That's what I was thinking too. Yeah. Well, it turns out, it turns out that this house, um, someone actually did die, but it was during childbirth. This house was so old that the original owners, um, you know, had midwives and all that stuff, and they did lose a baby um, in the house during delivery. So. I don't know if that doesn't have to do with any any weird noises, people walking around. I didn't hear any babies crying, but anyway, uh, I'm never gonna live in a farmhouse again. That's it. Nice Grant and Brad's ghastly gab.